Good evening, everyone, and welcome. It is Monday, June 20th, 2022, 7 o'clock, and it's time for the regular Grinnell City Council meeting. So we call the uh, meeting to order. Roll call, please. White. Yes. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Ray. Yes. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. Next item is perfecting an approval of the agenda. What is your pleasure? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. <laughs> Discussion? Call for question. Roll call, please. White. Hefley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Next item is consent agenda. What is your pleasure? I move the consent agenda as presented. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. Discussion? Call for question. Roll call, please. Hefley Worley? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly. Yes. Next is a uh, listing of meeting minutes and communications from the various uh, committees of the council, public works, public safety, finance, parks and rec, uh, as well as Veterans Memorial Commission meeting, uh, Board of Adjustment and Planning and Zoning. Uh, you can also find on the website all the minutes on these meetings, as well as the treasurer's report and the monthly police report. Next, we have a public hearing. <clears throat> uh, this public hearing is on the proposed plans and specifications, proposed form of contract, and estimate of cost for construction for the 2022 seal coat project. Are there any comments or any communications? No. Anything from the audience? Move to close the public hearing. Second. And seconded to close the public hearing. Discussion? Call for question. Roll call, please. Hefley Worley? Yes. White? Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Guard? Yes. Next, we'll move into committee business. First is Finance Committee. Thank you, Mayor Agnew. The Finance Committee met this morning at 8 a.m. in the second floor conference room. There were seven items on the agenda, and there were no inquiries. The first is a resolution uh, uh, directing the acceptance of a proposal to purchase $5,135,000 uh, dollars of general obligation capital no note series 2022 on behalf of the committee i so move resolution 20 22-118 second move and second a discussion call for question roll call please ray yes white yes bly yes davis yes Hefley worley yes guard yes the second item is approval of a resolution updating the personnel policy manual actually the specific bereavement funeral leave uh, this is resolution 2022-119, and once again, this can be found on the website too. And so, on behalf of the committee, I so move resolution 2022-119. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Call for question. Please answer. Ray. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Yes. The third item is approval of a resolution authorizing payment of a grant not to exceed $10,000 for tuck pointing of the Grinnell Area Arts Council building, uh, formerly known as the Stewart Library building at 926 Broad Street for benefits to the public due to the enhancement of the cultural environment in downtown Grinnell. We had talked about this previously at a couple of meetings uh, prior to this. The money for this will come from the hotel motel tax. On behalf of the committee, I so move resolution 2022-120. Second. Move and second to discussion. Call for question. Roll call, please. Ray? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Hefley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. The fourth item is approving a resolution providing for an additional 10% incentive to hotels that receive Iowa Economic Development Authority funding for holding conventions, meetings, etc., that bring visitors to the city of Grinnell. On behalf of the committee, I so move resolution 20, 22-121. Second. Move and second a discussion. Call for the question. Roll call, please. Ray. Yes. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Yes. The next item is approval of a resolution approving the quote from Keeper Security Incorporated for password security. And this uh, allows for up to 15 of our administrative people to be able to access this particular uh, piece of software. On behalf of the committee, I so move resolution 2022-122. Second. And second a discussion. Call for question. Roll call, please. Ray. White. Bly. Yes. 
Davis. Yes. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. The next item is uh, a resolution authorizing the city clerk to write off as uncollectible certain water, solid waste, sewer, storm sewer accounts and accounts receivable. Uh, it's rather small this time, which is very good. The amount is $1,152.43. And on behalf of the committee, I still move resolution 2022-123. Second. Move and second at discussion. Call for the question. Roll call, please, Ann. Ray. Yes. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Yes. The last item was review results of the cyber audit performed by the Iowa Community Assurance Pool. And uh, we reviewed those today in finance and authorized the staff to go ahead and make the necessary changes. Uh, there was no action that was needed. And that completes my report. Thank you very much, committee. Appreciate your work. Next report from Public Works and Grounds Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. The Public Works and Grounds Committee met here in the council chamber at 445 this afternoon. We took up 10 items and had no inquiries. Our first item was a resolution awarding the contract for the 4th Avenue Bridge Project to Iowa Bridge and Culvert, uh, LC of Washington, Iowa, in the amount of $780,382.59. With the committee's recommendation, I move resolution 2022-124 awarding that con contract. Second. Move and second. A discussion? I'll for the question. Roll call, please. Hefley Worley? Yes. Ray? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Thank you. Our second item was a resolution approving the proposed plans and specifications, proposed form of contract, estimate of cost for construction for the 2022 seal coat project. With the committee's recommendation, I move 2020, uh, resolution 2022-125. Second. Move and second at discussion. Call for question. Roll call, please, Ann. Hefley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray, yes. Thank you. Our third item was a resolution awarding the contract for the 2022 Seal Coat Project to Manats Incorporated. With the committee's recommendation, I move resolution 2022-126. Second. Move and second in discussion. Call for the question. Roll call, please. Hefley Worley. Yes. Ray. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Yes. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Thank you. Our fourth item was consideration of approval of change order number one for the water main replacement project. With the committee's recommendation, I move resolution 2022-127 doing so. Second. Move and second to discussion. Call for question. Roll call, please, Ann. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Yes. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Ray. Yes. Thank you. Our fifth item was consideration of approval of setting a public hearing date on the status of the funds for the Southeast Sewer Lining Project for July 5th. With the committee's recommendation, I so move. Second. Move and second to discussion. Call for the question. Roll call, please. Hefley Worley. Yes. Ray. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Yes. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Thank you. Our sixth item was a consideration of approval of setting a public hearing date on the status of the funds for the CDBG facade pr project again for July 5th. With the committee's recommendation, I move approval. Second. Move second of discussion. Call for question. Roll call, please, Ann. Hefley Worley. Yes. Guard. Yes. White. Bly. Yes. Davis. Yes. Ray. Yes. Thank you. Our seventh item was consideration of approval of a right of way uh, request for work for Mahaska Communication Group in the area from 8th Avenue to 1st Avenue, Ferguson Road to West Street. With the committee's recommendation, I move approval. Second. Move and second of discussion. A question. Roll call, please, Ann. Hefley Worley? Yes. Ray? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Thank yes. Thank you. Our eighth item was consideration of approval of a recommendation from the Parks and Recreation Board for a garden club pollinator garden at the east end of Merrill Park. With the committee's recommendation, I move approval. Second. Move and second to discussion. For the question. Roll call, please, Ann. Hefley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Thank you. Our ninth item was uh, uh, to authorize the mayor to create a wa water customer advisory committee pertaining to the design of a new water plant and a system-wide assessment. Uh, this advisory committee would be looking at aesthetics and building design, et cetera, not, not, not the actual water treatment uh, facility itself. 
With the committee's recommendation, I move approval. Second. Move and second to discussion. Question. Roll call, please. Kathleen Worley? Yes. Ray? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Thank you. Our tenth and final item was a discussion on the water system pressure loss and the service interruption we suffered a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'd like to ask Jordan to come up and uh, give us his take on what happened and how it happened, and then we'll turn this over to the mayor. Is the light green? Test. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Now I figured it out. Okay, so we went over some of the details at the previous meeting, but uh, so long story short, there's a couple basics you need to understand. You know, the main purpose of a water tower is not just storage; it's the elevation of the tower. I can store water on the ground, um, and so the the height of that tower is what dictates your system pressure. So if you want one PSI, you have to raise that water 2.31 feet. We want it 60 PSI, so we have to raise it a lot higher than that. Um, that tower is pretty much your pressure safety blanket across your system. And water towers need maintenance just like everything else. Um, and we have a contract with McGuire Iron and Steel where basically it's a five-year contract. So for the first four years, uh, they are cleaning and inspecting, uh, but they're not, they're doing all that live. So they have a submarine they drop in the top of the tank. They uh, basically vacuum out water, yada, yada, yada. The fifth year is where you have to take the tower offline. And that's where they do a full paint. And then they do also any steel work, anything like that, that you need at that time. So that was scheduled, of course, for this year. Um, so basically Monday morning, we had the tower offline about nine o'clock in the morning. So we were hundred percent off of the water plant. And so what that works, how that looks is you're essentially faking it. I'm running the water plant. I'm running pumps 24 seven to mimic what a full tower would be like that presents operational challenges that we have to overcome. So one thing we have to do is we have to set up blow off hydrants throughout our system because if pressure spikes, you need to relieve that pressure before you cause major problems. Um, we all, you know, we have to dial in our VFD, so those pumps kind of rev up and down. Um, and at the end of the day, you set alarm points really tight so that we get calls if there's issues. And so I received a call uh, right around 10:30 the night of, and it was a tower high alarm. And so basically, the set points we'd said is it went outside of the range that I want to see it at. And so when I got down there looking at the information, um, it was saying the tower was at 153 feet, which typical high alarm is 149 feet. So I was about four feet off of my normal operating pressures. So not alarming, but still enough. I wanted to get the call. So um, I was literally in the process to kind of throttle down the plant a little bit more. And then I watched our SCADA system just go down. You know, the tower went to zero and that's the indicator of a very, something took all of the pressure that the plant was creating. Um, Within a matter of minutes, I'd received probably about 20 phone calls, and thankfully the one I answered was uh, County Dispatch, and basically they were, uh, someone had called because they were standing there and they watched a main break, and it was, uh, if you don't know, 615 East Street, the apartments off of East Street, uh, behind those apartments is an alleyway where we have a 12-inch main that loops to the south of town. Uh, that 12-inch main is tied to the 14-inch, which is essentially tied to the water tower, and that's what went uh, late at night so that's where the fun started um, at that point it was uh, you know we attempted to shut it off uh, get it isolated of course 12 inch old pipe valves don't work so naturally you know it resulted in system loss without being able to isolate and get system back immediately so uh, the next phases there were getting emergency locates called in getting crews to help that's where absolute uh, they're a huge crew that we rely on because a job like that is outside of our capabilities of doing ourselves. Um, so Cody, he was able to help. Uh, he was the first one there. He was basically doing the digging. We were doing the whole work. Uh, we got it so that we could limp by until we could get the proper repair sleeves. Essentially, we were fixing it live, and the sleeve we had, we were not going to be able to get on properly live. Uh, we got it on so we could get pressure back. 
Um, and at that point, uh, I was calling all the vendors I could think of to help us get the correct sleeve we would need to be able to get it fixed live because we were not shutting it down. Um, and to get that sleeve, we ended up going through Brown Supply and we ended up and kind of had to make a quasi trade agreement with the city of Ames because we could not get our hands on this sleeve. Closest one was Chicago. There was a couple in Oklahoma City, but Brown Supply had just recently sold a couple to Ames. So uh, once we could guarantee some shipping times and guarantee that I could get them a sleeve in a proper amount of time, you know, they were able to, they were willing to let us have the sleeve they had in stock. Um, and then once we had that, that was about 11 o'clock. We were able to get that wrapped up. And then that's where uh, the uh, testing, the boil water advisor is obviously, we put that in a place about 5 a.m. Uh, give or take a little bit of time there. Uh, the main reason why it didn't go into place immediately is because we were responding to the break. So when I had a chance to breathe, that's where emergency management helped in, uh, helped me big time getting that issued. Um, obviously, the first people I called was the Iowa DNR. They're the regulating agency over a public water supply, so they need to be informed about that stuff. They were contacted immediately, and they were aware that, yeah, you're not going to get it issued until you get get started and get working on it. Um, any questions or anything like that specifically? No, Jordan, thank you very much for your you very good, good, concise job. wrap. I mean, all of you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I think that's the first boil order we've had in a long, long, long uh, time. But it was a boil advisory. advisory. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, advisory, not an order. Yeah. Yeah. So. You well, did a good job, everyone. It, it was a hassle to have to play with the water, but we know it was so much more work for you folks, and we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, and I, I would like to take a, a, just a moment to uh, echo what Jordan said, and, and specifically, uh, I'll miss some people, but there's a handful of people I'd like to uh, recognize for the work they did. Uh, <clears throat> Jordan, of course, for handling the whole situation as well as he did and, and uh, keeping the community comfortable. The city of Ames, definitely for them pitching in and, and working with us on this. Um, the the uh, uh, rep from Brown Supply who helped negotiate the deal, if you will. Um, Absolute and all their employees, but Cody, especially you for uh, working with us on, the, on this process. But it was all uh, the people that you were working with from your unit uh, we appreciate all their help uh, without trying to name each and every one of them but uh, it was a long it was a long uh, night and day for for you guys too uh, our water department staff because they uh, they hold together quickly uh, when I got up in the morning I can look out at our water plant and I think every city pickup was parked over there <laughs> at about 550 in the morning <laughs> So thank you. And Brian Paul from Pouchik Emergency Management uh, for your help. Rachel Kinnick from the Chamber uh, helping with the communications area. Our own city administrative staff uh, from communications as well as handling all the calls that people were making and, and questions that were flowing this direction. Um, and definitely uh, hy V uh, for coming so quickly with uh, several semi-loads of water. And I know it's probably in their business plan to do this, but the fact that they reacted so quickly and we're here. And then the people who volunteered to help unload that water uh, because those vehicles were parked out there in a hot, hot day. Uh, and we were moving them through very, very quickly. So all of those people, I, I, and I'm sure I've missed somebody, but I want to make, uh, on behalf of the council, make recommendation to those people and thank them very, very much for their work. And Pauschik Dispatch. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. That completes my report. Glad we only had to do it one time. I'd like to live the rest of my life <laughs> yeah. and never do that again. <laughs> yeah. All right. That completes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you, committee members. Good job. Report from uh, Public Safety. Thank you, Your Honor. We met tonight at 530 Head. Two items and one inquiry. Uh, the first item is consider a request from downtown merchants to uh, close Main Street from 4th Avenue to 5th Avenue July 23rd from 7 to 5 for a ridiculous day. And on behalf of the committee, I so move. 
Second. Move and second it. Discussion? Call for question. Roll call, please, Ann. White? Yes. Hefley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Thank you very much. And the second item is that's going to be a busy day in Grinnell. It's to consider approval of a recommendation from the Parks and Rec for Blues for Grinnell, which is July 23rd that night. So you'll have something during the day, and at night you'll have uh, a blues concert. So on behalf of the committee, I so move. Second. Move and second at discussion. Call for question. Roll call, please, Ann. White. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Hefley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. Bly? Yes. Thank you very much. And our inquiry was an uh, email that the chief had received from Ryan Ferguson in regard to a noisy car in the downtown. More than one. More than <laughs> one. Cars in uh, downtown and throughout the town, If uh, what we could do about that. So... We can't take any action on this, but we will uh, bring this to our committee at our next meeting and see what we can do. And the chief was uh, going to see what he can do, talk to the city attorney uh, about our noise ordinance. So uh, here again, I'd say if you hear something and see something, everyone has a little phone in their hand almost all the time. You could almost take a picture for us. So thank you very much. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next report from planning committee. Great. The planning committee only had one thing on our agenda, and that is to discuss parking for mer the merge development project on Main Street. Um, and we can't take any action on this tonight, but we did um, have a little discussion. And I'm thinking, I know Brent is from there. Are you guys also merged? Okay. So I will give you a chance to, to share as well. Um, so basically, um, we have kind of gone a little bit back and forth with parking, underground parking on this project, and it's kind of back. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so the um, this is to to do possibly underground parking um, in the merge development project, and although this has some cost, it also has a lot of benefits. Um, it does perhaps push the time to, well, not perhaps, it does push the timetable mm -hmm. back some as well. Um, so that is something that we need to think about, but I think it is a positive for all involved. And so we have started conversations um, and we'll continue those conversations about what might be possible in terms of help from the city or possibly from other mm -hmm. um, folks in the community to um, make something happen. And if we can um, help support this underground parking um, to add that to the project. Um, Brent, do you want to add anything to that? It's hard. It's been a long time <laughs> to get to today, and we're, we're at the point where we're ready to dig with the plans as it is. Um, with adding the parking uh, back in, it, it certainly set us back almost six months. So I think the team is, is <laughs> we just want to do the right thing, even though it might mean six months. But if, if, if parking wasn't correct for this building, we want to look at doing next building it's something we can consider as well but at the end if we're talking about a building that's going to be here for 100 years let's do it right the first time uh, we're open to hearing what you think is the best thing and we're going to bring that one forward because we're we believe in that all right any questions from the council about this we appreciate you considering this time delay because i think it's a, a a change in our downtown streetscape that we really need to be mindful of for everyone. And yeah. I appreciate your willingness to look and if it delays your project, it will in the long run, I think, be a good thing. So thanks for being considerate of us and our downtown stores. All right. Okay. That is the report for the planning committee. Very good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, committee members. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next item is a reading of third and final reading of an ordinance. 
Actually, we have two. The first, ordinance number 1514, an ordinance amending provisions pertaining to water rates. What is your pleasure? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Call for question. Roll call, please. Heffley Worley? Yes. White? Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Guard? Yes. The second is a third and final reading of ordinance number 1515, an ordinance amending provisions pertaining to sewer user recharges. What is your pleasure? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Call for question. Roll call, please. Heffley Worley? Yes. Guard? Yes. White? Yes. Bly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Ray? Yes. Thank you. Next, uh, inquiries. Do we have any inquiries? These gentlemen are welcome. It can lay down the thing can sit down and you can stretch the cord out. Yeah. Maybe. We have there we go. That level of tech. All right. <laughs> are we on? Can yes. you hear me? All right. I'm Alex Novak with GSS. Uh, we are based in Urbandale, Iowa. We are working with U.S. Cellular. Uh, we've been discussing uh, a project with Tyler for uh, the past few months. We are helping U.S. Cellular develop uh, small cell nodes within the city of Grinnell. Uh, we have 14 nodes that we are proposing within the city. Uh, nine of them are on Alliant poles. We are co-locating uh, on Alliant poles, but five of them, um, as we understand it, uh, the city would like to discuss a little further those locations. We were anticipating having a formal spot on the agenda tonight, but apparently there was a little confusion and we didn't make it on the agenda. So I flew in from Dallas this morning. Oh. Boy, are my arms tired. Um, <laughs> and I talked to Tyler, and, and he was very apologetic and, and with not getting us on the agenda. But he said, if I wanted to, I could still come in and, and chat with you folks, even though you wouldn't be taking any formal action tonight. You know, I could still kind of chat about the locations and how we arrived at those locations and, and kind of start the discussion. Please, there. So, please feel free. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, you know, we have five nodes of the 14 that, that we're looking at. Now, these nodes are in primarily residential areas and really the you know the, the focus of that is residents need coverage in their in their homes what's a node thank you i was just gonna ask the same <laughs> great thing. question no, no more about a node. i know a node node but i want to know your node great so a node as we call it is a small cell installation in this uh in this case on top of a wood utility pole and the node is actually a 24 inch canister antenna that sits atop the pole. Okay. So if you think of your traditional macro cell sites with big antenna arrays sticking up, not even close, right? So those, uh, those installations are designed to provide coverage. These installations are designed to provide capacity. So concentrated areas where users live, work, play, drive, um, lower to the ground, closer together. These types of installations really cover a matter of a few blocks, you know, and, and so it, the, the technical term is CRAN, Centralized Radio Access Network. That's what we're building to bolster U.S. Cellular's coverage in Grinnell. This is going to be part of the existing 4G network. It's not new coverage. It's not 5G. It's improving the network that's already here. Right. GSS currently is doing upwards of 500, between 500 and 1,000 of these nodes across Iowa right now in various markets for U.S. Cellular. Our relationship with U.S. Cellular goes back. We just celebrated our 20-year 20, 20 anniversary with U.S. Cellular as, as our biggest client uh, last year. So um, we do everything for, for U.S. Cellular from site acquisition, zoning and permitting, which is what I'm doing here, uh, construction management, project management, environmental studies, things of that nature. So we're really kind of a full turnkey service provider uh, for U.S. Cellular. So this is, um, you know, one of, our, one of our locations within Iowa where we have what are, are called a cluster of nodes. And um, each of these will be a wood pole. 
ultimately owned by U.S. Cellular because for various reasons that I will go through, Alliant wouldn't approve our co-location in each of these locations. So we got nine out of 15 with, with Alliant, or nine out of 14 with Alliant. Um, all, all within the right of way and all strategically placed so that we're not sitting right outside somebody's front window, right? You know, we're, we're sensitive to that. We wanna not be in the view shed of somebody's property because even though it looks like every other pole, it's still something new that, that people don't wanna see and have problems with. So the first one um, is, and, and I can have my, my associate Kevin here uh, pass these out. Um, the first one is located right about 1347 Fourth Avenue West. Uh, the existing poles weren't viable from an alliance standpoint. And we note the, uh, the location here for the proposed spot and you can see kind of a you know, straight on view and then an aerial view where the where the pin is located. Oh, wow. oh, okay. This is uh, Jordan here, big tall Jordan, yep. uh, the crop guy. <laughs> and all of these are gonna be very similar. They're all standard utility poles, um, nothing crazy with regard to a difference in height as to what's already there. Um, we, we design these things to kind of blend in with the character of the neighborhood so as not to stick out like a sore thumb. Um, so the second one you'll see is 689 Hamilton Avenue. Uh, again, no co-locatables uh, in the area. We place this one to avoid the, uh, the state, of, state right of way, which, you know, I mean, is not our ultimate preference to be in there. It's just, it's a tougher process. Um, but again, we picked out a spot that is not in the view shed of any residences. And uh, yes. Sorry. Is the pole as tall as a regular utility pole? Mm -hmm. So yep. it just blends in. Yes. Okay, it doesn't stick out. Okay. Correct, <laughs> correct. So you see gents and heatings here. And in a lot of locations where, you know, we're going in the right of way, we try to match what's what's already there. If we're going on a pole that has a luminaire on it, we'll put a luminaire on it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, we won't. You okay. know, and we don't want to change the character too much. Are your are your poles freestanding? I mean, yes. no guy wire. No guy wires. And that's that's a great question because Alliant will not allow us to co-locate on any of their poles that have a guy wire on it. Well, it explains these locations. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. I know they're real guy wire. That's a real whole nother kettle of fish. Yeah, right. Exactly. So the third location uh, is located near 397 Washington Avenue. Uh, the nearby pole that's there is what's called an end of the line pole where the, the oh, service kind of terminates and it does have a guy wire. So that's why we got denied on that location. And again, choosing this one, as you can see on the aerial, and we're focusing on the yellow pin on the aerial, not the red cross. The red cross represents where U.S. Cellular's engineers, that's their, you know, their, their wish list. That's their perfect location. So as long as we're within a half a block to a block of that, we're, we're pretty safe. It's, it goes like this. Okay. Here's Highway 6, and it goes that way. The, uh, the fourth one is located near uh, 647 Washington Avenue. Um, the existing poles around this area are very busy. You've got prime area on there. Uh, just really no good options for us to co-locate there. So as you can see, we've got a, an open space that we picked out. And uh, again, trying to stay out of direct line of sight out of anybody's yeah. front window. And then the fifth and final one, uh, located near 333 East Street. Um, the nearby poles in this area are all communication poles. They're not Alliant Energy. Now, U.S. Cellular does not have any current agreements in place to co-locate on these comm poles. So that's why we're proposing uh, our freestanding pole in this area. How, how much... You're putting 14 of these in. Mm -hmm. Is it based on like uh, business and apartment? Yeah. So rather these... than residential, like in my residential area on 10th Avenue Place, but I'm two blocks from the college and I'm okay, two blocks from Orange Park, but I'm more residential where a lot of these are closer. Mm -hmm. 
to high density. Mm -hmm. That's right. what it is to spike that up. So like the apartments, if all 34 apartments all have U.S. cellular and they want it all correct. 17 things at once because that's what yeah. you do. Yeah. So it's, it's really <laughs> accounting for density of users yeah. where there's a concentration of users, uh, you know, the capacity of that network is drained. So these nodes are designed to add to that capacity. Exactly. D downtown can or might be ahead of you. Nodes uh, downtown. Yeah, Kevin, are we doing anything downtown in Grinnell? Mm -hmm. This is for uh, oh, that's Tony. Oh, okay. He just died. Pat Johnson, Neil Johnson lives here. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he died. Yeah, he died. He died here. Oh, I, did know. I did know he died. Never mind. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. There's the. Uh, so the yeah, nine, the n I understand right. There's the nine that you have, in addition to the one you just showed us, those stuff, are going on yeah. existing poles. Um, yeah. how many are exist? Because I there are some raw lands. There are some freestanding poles in there. Okay. That you know, Tyler just didn't really have a, a question about. It was these five in particular. Okay. But the other ones are already going on poles that are already there. What? What? Some yes, okay. some of them. The other area, am I am yeah. I missing something? We did that well, most of the time. I would think with the college students, mm -hmm. uh, sixth to tenth, mm -hmm. park to east. I don't see a lot. I mean, they're young and they would be. I hate to say this, more up on how right. to use and their phone. You know the the <laughs> coverage there. Uh, or might, might already be, good. be robust. There might that might be might close be to a, a good, macro site. It might be a good area for a tower, right? And there may they there may already be a macro site there that's macro serving macro the college. Because yeah. I'm sure you know going into this, the college probably already had pretty robust coverage to begin with. Yeah. Okay. But it's Just all checking. you know it's all driven by the RF engineers. They see where the network has weak spots, where it's stronger, and they design these. Yeah. clusters to basically fill in any gaps that are there. Okay, oh. so at, obviously we can't make a decision tonight. Right, right. But I would like to ask a procedural question. I, it, I assume you're asking the council's permission to place those five poles. Um, y yes and no. So the, the city's procedure, uh, small cells are, are, from what I understand, kind of a new animal here mm -hmm. as they are in a lot of places um so the procedure and, and you know tyler can jump in if i'm if i'm off base here hasn't been really defined yet um i know the iowa state legislation you know passed a law with regard to placement of small cells in right of ways and um you know it does kind of limit the the input that city governments can have that being said u.s cellular is a, is a good partner and a good neighbor and you know we're always willing to to come in and you know talk about what we'd like to do and you know what what it means to the city um so you know i i understand that from my conversation with tyler today um there may have to be another meeting uh, which is totally fine but whatever process, you know, and we were unsure whether, and I know there was going to be some input from the city attorney on this. There was going to be a memo written that I haven't seen yet. Um, but whatever is determined that the process is, mm -hmm. we'll abide by the process. Yeah. Well, the reason I ask is in 23 years on the council, we've been, at, I remember being asked once, and that was for the cell tower over by the mm -hmm. uh, old public safety building. But other than that, we've never been asked to even our opinion on a light, well, light poles because we have to work through a line energy. Right. Uh, but no other poles, no other types have come before the council. So I'm curious um, how Tyler and the city manager are working on this. I, it seems that they have, they would have this well in hand. We, I personally, we really appreciate you coming and, and briefing us on your, your concept and the plan, but. Uh, Tyler, where where does this fit together? Um, 
does the council even need to meet on this? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it is a little against the rules so uh under the new the uh zoning regulations that lift um you know special use permits which are first heard by the planning and zoning commission and then ultimately approved by the board of the council. And there are certain things and uses um which are required to get a special use permit. And one of those is something <laughs> that's labeled as being a base and powers and it says specifically that those relate to uh, radio and television. Um, and so, you know, there's been a few special use permits granted. Um, for example, uh, Alliance Energy, right there where their building used to be on Main Street, they put in a tower that is uh, specifically for them to be able to communicate with that um, substation there with their new building that they built. And then uh, I believe there's also another tower kind of on, uh, I can't remember the name of the building, it's really fast now, but uh, there's a uh, older um, manufacturing and industrial type of use for it. And then there's a tower that was put back there. Those are really the only two special use permits uh, related to towers uh, that I have dealt with. Uh, the next one would likely be the upcoming new tower for the Hachi County, uh, their, their whole upgrade. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little interesting, you know, do small cell towers, uh, are they explicitly defined in our zoning regulations that they need to get a special use permit? Uh, I've kind of went back and forth on that, but ultimately I think I have to decide that no, they don't. And so then they, if there's other documentation uh, that maybe allows us to kind of explain a little bit more on the limited authority that cities really have related to this first and poll when uh, the code these polls make their requirements and so and this is all really just informational at this point I'm gonna make the part and won't be making a, a decision on it but uh, this is the forward thinking for the for the actual meeting coming up. Milo, where do we this is Alex, where do we stand on the but use your microphone. He can't hear you. <laughs> Tyler, where do we stand on on the uh, city attorney issuing the the memo that you had mentioned? I uh, I heard that it was coming, but not the last I heard. Um, and I don't know what information, if any, thing is really relevant or new is going to come out of that. Just based on sort of the fact that we forwarded on the information that we had about in addition to the information we provided. Do you have a time frame that you're looking at? As soon as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're we're look, coming up on you know we want to have the cluster on air, built in on air, um, in a little over a year. Okay. I'm just so we, curious. That's a reasonable, yeah. actually. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to get questions, but I looked at the last map that came through, and can you explain what? Because we're probably going to get questions. Why there's nothing north of um, Sixth Avenue? <laughs> you know, it, it's really just what the end, the radio frequency engineers determine needs to be installed. Okay. Um, it's not just a, a blanket thing everywhere. It's possible that that section of town is covered by a macro site to the north. Okay. And it doesn't have any capacity issues there. Okay. And I think we do have a lot more, um, as as we well know, a lot more multiple family house um, housing in the um, south side of town. And mm -hmm. so my guess is that meets a need that doesn't exist on the north end of town. Sure. We have many fewer yeah. uh, multiple family housing units. There. Yeah, you look at, you know, housing like that, multiple devices in every unit, you mm -hmm. know, guaranteed. Um, yeah, it, yeah. The, the network gets stressed pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. it is only good that mm -hmm. we are addressing the south side of town because sure. I think sometimes um, they feel as if they are not as well taken care of. <laughs> yeah. So I actually think this yeah. is this is yeah. very positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I have for you tonight, unless you have any other questions. Anything from anybody? 
No, sir. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> thank the, you for your time. the detailed this. update. Thank you. We'll be, thank you. We should be able to work through our process and move yeah. on this, I would think. So, Great. Thank you. We, thank we you. appreciate your help. Good. Very thank much. you very much. We, of course, can't make a decision tonight, but I think I can speak for the council <laughs> and say you probably don't have to fly here from Dallas to make another presentation. <laughs> we can no. probably work this out pretty easily. Oh, but we'd like to have you come back. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I, I've been doing this. I'm in my 22nd year of doing this, and I started in in 2000. And the first market I did was all across Iowa for Nextel Partners. If you remember that, Keith. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So uh, mm -hmm. I've been to Grinnell several times <laughs> in my in my career. And we have nice well, thank you. you can stay while you're Just, here. I, I ate at a nice uh, my favorite authentic Mexican restaurant in Grinnell is a little place called Taco John's right over there <laughs> that, uh, that I took my friend Kevin to. So it was great. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank Anything you. else for the good of the cause? If we're not, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>